So hello everyone. Um, I think most of you know who I am already, but for those of you who don't, my name is Christina. I work in the UN political mission in Somalia. I've worked previously in peacekeeping mission and I'm going to do the wrap up of this week. So we started the week learning about the central role in protection in all humanitarian missions and activities and how the civil military coordination officer tasks are strictly linked to this. Um, in my opinion, this has been an excellent topic to wrap up the course because protection does offer us a lens that we should all be looking through. I think if, if we have one thing in common, all the participants of this course is that we are working towards the same thing, which is protecting the people and enabling services to the people. Um, we learned this week that there is three tiers of protection, uh, which I think tie very well with some of the civil military coordination officer tasks, one being coordinating actors, the other one being protecting the humanitarian space and the other one being liaising with relevant actors to provide physical protection where this is needed. Um, one sentence that I really like from the micro is that protection is a legal responsibility, an activity and a strategic objective. Protection is everything. It should be streamlined in every single step we take. And we learned this through very interesting discussions that we had in our Jamboard, where we discussed how to embed the principle of protection in preparedness phases, in coordination, in every, in, in every single step we take, including after action review. Um, I think that was an excellent activity because we also could brainstorm on, on our own experiences and how actually most of the tasks that we've been doing in our careers are strictly linked to protecting people. Um, the other thing I learned from the micro course that was a highlight for me is the importance of having a person that really understands how the humanitarian system works and how the military system works. Um, why? Because in order to protect the people, there will be several instances in which we have to um, coordinate not only our actions, but also our advocacy efforts. And in order to do this, we must understand when to approach different clusters, when to do an intercluster approach, when to rely on senior leaders, um, senior management figures such as the humanitarian coordinator at the country level, such as perhaps the SRSG if there is a peacekeeping mission, how can the emergency relief coordinator at headquarters help us? Um, so I think it really adds value to have this one person with the expertise of knowing how the system works. Um, and this would be the civil military coordination officer. And this ties very well with the leadership skills that we learned on our peer learning this week because it's not only about knowing the system, but about knowing who you're talking to in the system. Because um, as we have seen, it is very important to change our communication style, um, to, to adapt to the needs of the other person when we talk to them, when we try to lead them, when we try to convince them of what we need to do together in order to ensure the protection of civilians. Um, so let me move on to some of the comments that you have done on the virtual stuff because I think they were really valuable. Uh, they highlighted that um, something that I really liked, especially coming from peacekeeping, he said, well, we all criticize peacekeeping missions at times, and it's true, they need a lot of improvement. But then he said, when we see one battalion leave from a certain area, civilians complain because um, they do feel protected. Christina had a similar story um, when she said that in Somalia, when there is a base of the African Union um, peacekeeping mission moving from one place to another one, it's, it's often common that civilians relocate in order to be um, around that base. And this is important for two reasons. First, because it highlights how the system somehow works, it provides protection to the civilians. But second, because I think we have managed and we have to continue to to mainstream efforts of the humanitarian community in order to make understand the civilian populations that having armed actors around them uh, does not always mean that that's going to complicate the situation. But those armed actors, when they are properly coordinated um, by or with humanitarian actors, can provide them certain security, certain protection, certain stability that will enable for the humanitarian aid to reach them. Um, and speaking of reach, we also saw some comments from our colleagues working in Afghanistan, in Syria, how they were very concerned about access to certain populations. Uh, because protection also entails an idea of 
uh, universal rights and how we must treat every segment of our community of a population with the same services to ensure their human rights. And in this sense, I also really like the comment that I posted on the virtual love sock when he said once we acknowledge that protection is not just about security but is about providing human rights to the people we understand that is about enabling all kind of services for them education wash healthcare um, and in this sense protection is not only something that we must look at when we work on complex emergencies but also when we work in natural disaster environments um, a couple of other examples that I wanted to highlight. The example of Myanmar, I think, is fascinating how um, we can mainstream protection, especially from a civil military coordination perspective, when we talk about the repatriation of all these refugees that we have seen from the kind state back into Myanmar. Um, there is a lot of coordination work to do, a lot of advocacy to ensure their security, to ensure that they will have um, services provide it. Um, so I thought that was a very good case study to look into. And the last one was we talk about Bahamas. It really got my attention because he said, well, it wasn't difficult to deliver services to the people um, in the response stage because there was only one criteria and it was if people need the aid, they would get it. But then when you move into recovery, um, they realized that there were certain people that didn't have a status to access those services. Um, so that's quite tricky. And again, we learned in our discussion that we must continue to mainstream protection in every phase of um, aid delivery and humanitarian action. So that's my wrap up for the week. I wanted to just say a couple of words because I've been lucky enough to do the wrap up for the last um, week. Thank you for everyone, for everything that you've taught me, um, for uh, um having been so nice during this course sharing your experiences for having taken the time to write your comments in the virtual OSOC and thank you and the team for the excellent six weeks work and all the work they have put in this course um, i am personally very grateful to all of you and hope we stay in touch and bye for now